three most important documents in any multifamily due diligence. And the reason why I came up with this particular topic was I've been asked to speak on the uh, Joe uh, Fairless's Best Ever podcast uh, on the topic of due diligence on multifamily. And that's actually, oh, God, I hate to say it's one of my one of my best topics ever because um, I actually taught a class years ago, two-day weekend class on multifamily due diligence. And I walked everybody through the whole thing. And I did it a couple of times. And I said, this is so painfully boring. I can't do it anymore. And so then I went and I recorded the whole thing. And then I sold it as, as a, a, you know, a training thing for like a thousand bucks. Um, it was really good. People still watch it today. I think I had more hair back then, surprisingly. So, um, and, uh, you know, so that's how, that's how long ago it was that I wrote then and, and did that, but it, it was great stuff. It was really good stuff. Okay. So what are the three things that, um, most important things? Okay. The most important third party report that you're going to get is a bank statement. And in our letters of intent, we always include all the documents we want to see during the due diligence. And always in there is 12 months of bank statements. And that is, you cannot get started without those. If the seller crosses them off the list and says, well, I'm not gonna give you my bank statements. Dude, we're buying a business. I wanna see exactly what your receipts were in this business that you're trying to sell me. I wanna see how well you run this company because what you are going to do with your, during the due diligence is you are going to recreate the financials and you're gonna go back and through all these sources, put together your own trailing 12 financial statement on this property. And all of that is going to start at the top, which are the bank statements. The bank statements will clearly tell you how much money went into that bank every single month. How much money do we collect? Everything else is a lie or can be a lie. But you can't lie about the bank statements. When the money goes in that bank account, it gets recorded. All right. Now, um, if they tell you, oh, well, we commingle our bank accounts with other properties that we own. Okay. Let me ask you something. Is this entity, is this property owned by a unique entity? Oh, yeah, it's got its own LLC. Great. Then it's got its own tax ID number and it's got its own tax filings. And if you use a CPA, I want to see what the CPA used to verify the deposits into the bank account because there's no way a CPA is going to sign off on a tax document that they haven't been able to verify the numbers on. So I wanted to have the same thing that your your um, your uh, accountant used to come up with his numbers. I want to see 12 months worth of bank statements. Or the other one that we always get is, oh, um, well, you know, I kind of use this property as an ATM machine. And so, you know, you're going to see, if you see my bank statements, you're going to see money coming out for lunches and stuff. I don't care. I don't, you know what? You can block out all of those um, um, expenses off the bank statements. I just want to see the money going in. That's it. All right. Now, if you, if the person doesn't have an LLC or they, they um, you know, just kind of uh, run it as a, as a privately owned uh, property, then they'll file a Schedule E with the IRS. That's great because who would ever inflate their income to the IRS? Certainly not a property owner. So you know that the income that shows up in the Schedule E is going to be pretty darn low, and that's the one you want to use to verify the financials, okay? So that's the situation. Now, let me give you one, one trick. Here's a trick. When you get though, that, those bank statements, you go through every single deposit. And I'm going to ask, here's a trick question. I'm going to ask everybody a trick question. 
And anybody, you can, you can answer. I want to see the answers to this next question. Here's the question. If you're looking at the bank deposits and you see a deposit, any type of deposit, there may be one, there may be more than one, there may be none, but any deposit that ends in three zeros, what does that mean? And why is that a red flag? I will wait for your answers in the comment section. There's the question. Why is why do deposits with three zeros represent a red flag? All right. Number two, the lease files. You know, when you go to do a property inspection, everybody gets out there like, I got to slap on my tool, but I'm going to go walk every, got my clipboard. I'm going to go through every single unit. Okay, that's fine. Go through every single unit. But the real money is in the manager's filing cabinet. That's what's going to make or break you. So don't get all wrapped up in seeing, oh, yeah, go see all the units. Absolutely. But make sure you go in there and you look at the lease file. You're going to sit in that office and you're just going to go through every single file because the money is in the filing cabinet. It's not in the units. It's in the filing cabinet. That's where this business begins and ends. Remember, nothing happens in this business until someone signs a lease. That's when money begins to exchange hands in this business. So you want to go through every single contract for the exchange of money because that's really what you're buying. You are buying those lease contracts and you wanna validate how good they are. Here's a question again, three zeros. Why would a deposit ending in three zeros be a red flag in my book? Let me give you a little bit of a hint. The rents on these properties are $695 a month. Let me throw that one out there. Let you, let you, let you chew on that one a little bit. Um, so we're going to go through every one of those lease files, and we're going to verify that that's a valid customer. Now, I say valid customer. The guy signed the lease, and he's living there now, so he's, he's going to stay there. But you want to make sure that the seller is not loading up all the units just before the sale with sex offenders, with felons. You wanna make sure that he's following. If you look at the purchase and sale agreement, there's a part that says you have to continue to run this property the way you have for the last X number of years. You have to continue to run it that way. If this guy starts loading up new tenants and you can see it right on the rent roll, you know, when these people moved in, you can see when they moved in and you look at, oh, there's no criminal background check. There's no credit check. The guy's putting in bad customers. And that's a huge red flag in your book. That's that's something that you start to think to yourself, wait a minute, this is a problem. I mean, I tell you, there there are some people that, you know, three months before they uh before they buy the property, they load them up. They they get rid of all their their uh tenant criteria and they just put anybody in that uh in that in that building and it becomes your problem. So you're going to go through every lease file. You're going to make sure the lease file is clean. Make sure that if they're, they've lived there for three years, there are two renewal contracts in there. You want to make sure that, that they've updated every 18 year old that is, um, that is, uh, that is over the age of 18 in that property is on the lease. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, when the person's going around to every single unit doing the inspection, that if they see a cat, it's on, it's on the lease and they pay a pet fee. Uh, all of those types of things, because that is where the money is, the leases. Okay, so that's second bank statement, lease contracts. Now, all right, the third one, and this is one that I don't think the teachers of this industry out there uh, stress this enough, and that is um, doing sec secret shopper analysis. Or, and that's what I'm saying, that's a boots on the ground analysis. 
but more importantly, the market analysis. Um, that is that is uh, really getting an understanding of what what the market's doing out there, because I think some people have really done a a, a huge disservice to their business um, by not analyze or to some of the deals they've looked at by not analyzing what the market is actually doing. That's a huge problem because they are telling their investors, oh, this place is great. We get 20% renting, uh, rental increases every year. And then come to find out that now they're really not doing that. And you're looking in all the wrong places. We have become in our analysis for acquisitions so dialed into um, the market and what the rent comps are. We do our, oh, you always do your own rent comps. Don't trust what a broker is going to tell you. And let me tell you some folks, I'm going to type it right in here. I'm about to, I'm going to start promoting this guy's um, services. So um, if you see emails from me uh, regarding this and you get a discount if you sign up using my name, this is what we're using. And this is what's called um, Hello Data, Hello Data uh, dot AI. Um, this is what we're using for all our comps. And if you type in the co coupon code MFIA, you get a 10% discount and you get a seven day free trial. You can try it out. But let me just tell you, this stuff is great. This company is, is fantastic. Mark Rutzen, um, who I have known for a million years, uh, he started a company called Enodo. And I loved Enodo. Talk about getting great comp information. Uh, it was fantastic. It was so good. That uh, when he, you know he, he started it out in Chicago and he hired two guys from Northwestern, one guy from Northwestern, one guy from University of Chicago, to start helping him build this company. Before those guys had even graduated, they sold the company to Walker and Dunlop because Walker and Dunlop uh, loved the services so much. So all of a sudden, these kids, big, I'm not even out of college, and they just made a ton of dough. And now they went off and said, "Hey, we're creating this new program called HelloData.ai." And this is the next cutting edge version of market analysis. So go check it out. If you said they ask you for your credit card, put in my uh, my coupon code, you get ten percent off. But it's a uh, it's a great great service for determining market analysis. Um, but that's that's the other thing that most important with the during the due diligence period because if you're wrong, Bolton, it'll take you years to make up. Uh, for that mistake between the property and your investors. Mm -hmm. So uh, definitely uh, make sure that you um, check out Hello Data. Okay, now uh, let me get back to uh, the answer to this question. Um, okay, so the thing is that when you see a three digit zeros at the end of any deposit, that is a red flag for an owner contribution. And what it means is the property was short on cash and they needed an owner transfusion. And it comes in in the form of a number divisible by a thousand. How much do you need to put in? I might put in 10,000. That shows up as 10,000. That's not going to be income to the property. That's going to be an owner contribution. Um, and so make sure you don't include that in your numbers for the deposit that, particularly, that particular month. And when you see that, the next thing you're going to ask is, why? Why? What happened? Why did you have to contribute money? Why isn't the property performing on its own? Uh, those are the types of things you look for when you look at that, those bank statements. So that is it, folks. Uh, and then let me see. What else do we have? Um, I've got my uh, Thursday um, Thursday live YouTube streams, a, a whole other topic, um, and then uh, then my usual stuff with my students. We are uh, deep into the due diligence and actually the financing uh, contingency period for the um, uh, for the uh, hotel that we're buying in Louisville, and uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be great. And I'll tell you more about that once we finalize the numbers and it's and everything looks great. All right, everybody, great to see you, and I will all talk to you later.